Hey everyone and welcome to another great episode in this Selenium series and in this one we are going to see how we can automate in the most efficient way filling in forms in booking.com website so we can really get the best results and this is going to be the main focus in the next two episodes because not all the form fields are basically text fields that we can directly send keys to so that's why it is going to be extremely interesting to see how we can handle complex form fields using Selenium, so let's dive into it. All right, so at that stage, we have left the previous tutorial and we understood in the previous episode how we use this booking class in order to have more control in our webdriver.chrome class. And we also designed some methods that could be helpful, like the double underscore exit, so we could have the option of using context managers when we instantiate an instance of this booking class. And we also have designed this method in here, which is looking like land first page, and it basically lands the bot on this const.base URL, which is booking.com, that is located in the constants.py file. Okay, so now before we go ahead and understand what are the next steps, let me do two more actions that are going to be quite useful for us to have more control. So the first one is going to be to adding the implicitly wait method. And just a quick reminder, implicitly wait is the method that will allow us to wait for some amount of time until the element is ready on the website. So if we were to say self.implicitly wait and for example pass in here 15 seconds, then no matter which method is going to be executed with the prefix of find element, then it is going to wait approximately 15 seconds, but it could also proceed to the next find element method by less time, because not always we'd like to wait 15 seconds, and this method is going to take responsibility for that. And the second line of code that I'd like to add in here is going to be self maximize window. And the reason I want to do this, it is because I just want to have a cleaner look when I test the bot. So now, let me go and run our run.py file. And now you can see that the web browser has been opened in maximized window, so it is more nicer. And you can also see that we are inside booking.com as expected. All right, so now that we have done this, then the next step in here is probably going to automate clicking on choose your currency. Now you might have think that we should automatically automate the where are you going and as well as the check in check out dates and selecting how many people we are. But actually at first it might be a great idea to change the currency so we will have like a more common look to all the deals that are going to be resulted after we search for them. So now let's basically understand what we need to automate. So we need to automate clicking on that. And right after it, we need to automate clicking on USD or Euro or whatever currency we look for. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to try to automate clicking on USD because basically this is one of the popular currencies out there. So this is what we should do. We should basically click on this one. And right after that, we should somehow try to click on that one. And then you can see that right after we have clicked on that, then the currency has been changed and then we are ready to try to send some text in where are you going text box. So now let's try to understand how we are going to automate clicking on that. So I'm going to click right click and click on inspect so we can understand which element is responsible to display this button. Now I'm not sure why I have to do it twice always, but I really did not figure this out yet. But if this is happening to you as well, then maybe try to do it once again and it will basically color the element in the blue background as expected. So I will do that one more time. And you can see that this button is actually what responsible to display this currency element. So now when we try to identify an element with selenium, then we should always try to be smart enough to identify this element in the most unique expression as we can. Now the attribute of ID is actually the most 
unique attribute that an HTML element could have, but not always we are going to have ID for HTML elements, so that's why we need to figure out other approaches to find that element. And in our case, maybe you could have thought to find this element with the class is equal to BUI button, but actually this might not be the most smart way to do that, because there might be some other buttons with that class, as classes in HTML are for styling elements, so multiple buttons could have the same styling. So that's why maybe filtering this button with the data tooltip text is equal to choose your currency is a more unique expression that we can use. So now I'm going to copy this expression from here and I'm going to basically identify it with CSS selector method that we have learned in the third episode. So I'm going to go back to PyCharm and down below I'm going to say def change currency and I will also receive currency as a parameter in here so that maybe we could have the option to change to different currency rather than United States dollars. So I'm going to say currency and down below I'm going to say self.find element by CSS selector. And I will open up and close and I will press enter because I don't want to make the lines of code too much long so that it is a great idea to separate them in the following way. And I'm going to now open up a single code and I'm going to use button and open and close square brackets. Now if you remember this is how we used to work with CSS selectors, we first wrote the type of HTML element and then inside we wrote the expression that we should filter this button by and this is going to be data tooltip text is equal to choose your currency and then it is a great idea to assign this whole expression to a variable so I'm going to say currency underscore element is equal to that one and down below I can say currency underscore element dot click so it will automate clicking on that now let me change this parameter to have a default value so we will not really have to pass the value all the time so now I'm going to open up the run.py on the right side so let me split that vertically and let me open this in here like that and then let me call this button so it will be bot dot change currency like that and then let me run this run.py file and test the results so as expected we are on the home page and you can see that we have automated clicking on the change currency element so that is nice that is a great first step to achieve our goal now the next thing that we look to automate is probably to clicking on one of the currencies and for the purposes of this tutorial let me first show how we could identify the USD. Now in the future we have a parameter that receives the currency type so maybe we could choose from the run.py a different currency that we can automate to click on. So let me use inspect again so we could identify this element. And now if I click on this element to expand its inner HTML elements, then you can see that in here we have this text and this text as well. But actually the whole button is coming from this anchor tag because if I take my mouse to here and I hover it, then you can see that we have a green background surrounded our currency. So that's why maybe we should try to find this A element and we should use something that will help us to identify this a tag. Now I have expanded the view of the inspect in here so we can have a cleaner look and you can see that we have here some key value attributes again. Now I can try to find data model header async url param something like that that is containing the text that looks like selected underscore currency is equal to USD. Now I know that we did not learn how to find elements that contains some substrings but this is actually very easy with the CSS selector method as well so let's see in PyCharm how we can do that. Alright so down below I'm going to use a new variable that we can name it selected currency element and that is going to be self dot find element by CSS selector and here we are going to write the expression again so it will be single quotes a and then 
we will use square brackets and now we will use this long expression that will help us to identify this element so it will be data dash modal dash header dash async dash again url dash param like that so i know that this is a long expression but this is actually a great approach to identify this element and that is going to include a substring so besides doing equals to then we should use asterisk equals now i know that again this is not something that i have covered in the first three episodes but now we know how we can try to find an expression that contains substring and it is as easy as using the asterisk sign near the equal sign and then i'm going to use here double quotes and i'm going to say selected currency is equal to usd like that now if you remember then this is actually the value that this long key had in this element that we look to automate so now we could say selected currency dot click and this should be enough to basically automate clicking on the usd currency now you may think to yourself why did you hard code this usd in here besides you did not use the currency parameter so that is a wonderful point and i'm going to just change it now so i'm going to add here a formatted string and i'm going to refer to the value of the currency like that and then what i'm going to do now is going to run.py by again splitting the panes and working on run.py and i'm going to pass in currency is equal to usd like the following and then this line will be responsible to basically replace this expression with the usd string and this should be enough so let's test this out so i'm going to run our program Alright, so you can see that the currency has been changed to USD. Now, we could also test this one more time by trying to click on a totally different currency. So let's go with GBP, alright? So let's try to do that. So let's open the PyCharm again. And besides sending USD, let's send GBP. And run our program again. And let's see now what will happen. All right, so again, perfect. So as you can understand, we have identified the perfect key value expression to identify the element for changing the currency. And from here, we are ready to go forward with the next steps that our bot should do in order to search for the best deals. All right, so now that we have completed the changing currency method, then let's design the next method that we should do now. So if you remember, we should now try to identify an element for sending some text to the search text form element. So if we run our automation again, just to have the browser being opened in booking.com and wait for this automation being completed, then now we should automate sending some text to this area. So I'm going to inspect again and I'm going to try to find the most smart expression as I can to send text to this form field. Now, I said earlier in this tutorial that if our elements are including the ID attribute, then this is actually the strongest attribute that the element could have to basically identify its uniqueness. So that's why I'm going to identify an element by the ID with the value of S twice. So now i can go and say in a new method in pycharm something like def select place to go something like that and i can basically receive a parameter that will say place to go and now i can go down and say search field is equal to let me make the font bigger so excuse me if you did not see the text quite well so i'm going to say here self dot find element by id and i'm going to find this by s twice like that and at first i'm going to do something that we really did not see before which is looking like search field dot 
clear so clear stands for cleaning the existing text so if one day we'd like to search something twice then maybe we will have some leftovers so that's why cleaning the entire text at first place is a great idea before we write some new fresh text so that's why i launched the clear method and then i'm going to use search field dot send underscore keys and i'm going to basically send place to go that is arriving from this parameter and then i'm going to go to run.py and i'm going to say bot dot select place to go and let's use here new york as the first place to go and now let's see what will happen so i'm going to run our automation again and test the results now by the way we could comment out the changing currency code just because we don't want to probably execute it every time we test a new area in our bot so i'm going to do that just in a minute all right so you can see that the minute that i have wrote some text then we received a drop down so what that means it means that we need to go now and identify the first result of our of our drop down and we need to automate clicking on that so this is exactly what i'm going to do now i'm going to click inspect on the drop down and I'm going to do that one more time and you can see that this is the value that we should automate clicking on that so this is actually an attribute with the tag of li now li is actually standing for a list html field that is basically commonly used if we want to display a list of elements so that's why we see this tag with the name of li now we should again try to find how we are going to click on this li so this is this element i believe yeah and then if we expand this a little bit more then we will have a cleaner look now you can see that inside each li we have an attribute that says data dash i is equal to some string now i know that it is hard to see but if you will look in the bottom left then you can see that once i point on that element then the first result of our drop down is being shown with green background and if i was to move my mouse to that element then you can see that it now points to the second result of the dropdown. So what that means? It means that the data i value is actually like an index of all the results because the first result is having the value of zero and the second one is having the value of one and the third result is having the value of two and so on. So that's why we could identify an element with the expression of data dash i is equal to zero. So I'm going to open our PyCharm and I'm going to say right under select place to go something like first result is equal to self dot find element by css selector and our expression is going to look like li and square brackets again and it will be data dash i is equal to zero like that and then right after we have done this then we are going to say first result dot click like that and then i'm going to leave everything as it is because those lines are going to be responsible to basically click on the first result and this is exactly what we want to do so i'm going to run run.py and test the results once again and I forgot to uncomment this section, so excuse me for that. And now you can see that we got a perfect result. We automated clicking on the first result of the dropdown, and hence we have done that. Then booking.com automatically took us to the check in, check out area. So here's the exact place that we can already try to automate selecting check in dates and as well as check out date. So this is great and this means that we have done a wonderful job identifying how we could click on that specific element. All right, so I hope that you have enjoyed in this episode and in the next episode we are going to look forward to automate the check in and check out dates 
as well as selecting the adults and basically search for the best deals in booking.com. Now to search for the best deals, we are also going to need to filter the results by star rating. So four star, five star, stuff like that. So it is going to be very interesting to look in the next episodes of this Selenium full series as well. And I look forward to see you in the next episode. So be sure to hit the like button if you have enjoyed in here and as well as subscribing to my channel. I will see you very soon.